Kim Turner. Alan and Kim. Alan? Hello, Kim. How are you? Welcome both of you to Enough Rope. Thank you. The day your life changed, Alan. The day was um, the 2nd of December last year. Um, when our seven-year-old daughter uh, rushed out of her bedroom and uh, held her head and complained of a, a severe pain in her, in her head. Uh, moments after that, she collapsed in Kim's arms. Um, they rushed uh, Kim and Zadie to the Royal Children's Hospital in, in Melbourne. Um, they then operated on Zadie and they found a, a very large aneurysm in Zadie's brain. Um, as a result, uh, Zadie died and uh, from that, uh, through the grief that was happening at the time, um, we were organ donors family, we were a registered organ donor family, and Kim mentioned to the, the, the doctors there at the Children's Hospital that Zadie would like to donate her organs, and we did. This was something, Zadie was only seven, right? The, seven, yes. Uh, this had been discussed with her, had it? Yes, we, uh, Kim registered the family in, in, in February 2000, and I guess right through that five-year period, we, we talked about it with our two kids. And we always thought that, you know, as uh, organ donors, we would be the, the first mm -hmm. to, to be donors. Uh, as it was, it was our seven-year-old daughter that was our first in our family. Were you all able to be there when Zadie died? Yes, yes. Um, um, our son, who is 10, he was right through the, the, the period of the hospital. Um, and it was a fairly horrific time for us, um, very emotional, as you can imagine, and uh, you know, we had family and friends around us. And I think it was, a, you know, when the neurosurgeon came in and, and said and looked us in the eye and, and the last thing parents want to hear is that your, your child's not going to make it out of surgery, um, she's going to die. And that surreal experience through that all, we, we, we made the decision that, you know, she is going to be an organ donor. And uh, I guess uh, from that, you know, good things have come from uh, Zadie's death and Zadie's passing. Kim, I, I can think of nothing worse in life than to experience the death of your child. Well, it's something you never ever think will happen. You don't, you don't ever picture it in your mind. You never really think about it. So, like Alan said, when we registered as donors, we never thought that it would be her. Um, that was the only thing when we were in the hospital and we knew that Zadie um, had already died, that the only thing that made us get through the next few hours was the fact that she was going to be a tissue and organ donor. Um, that even though we were sitting at her bedside and our hearts were breaking, there were other parents in the same hospital who were overjoyed because they knew their own child or adult was going to have another chance of life. So in a way her life force was going elsewhere? Yes, mm. yes. And I think that was the only thing that, we, that gave us the strength to hang on. I may be wrong on the protocols of this, but my understanding is that uh, nobody really knows where organs go, that it's, it's an anonymous process. That's or, right. So you don't know who's had he helped? Oh, we know a little bit. In Australia, the legislation's there to protect both sides, like the donors and the reciprocants. Um, we have the ability to write to the reciprocants and they have the ability to write to us letters. But in the letters, it has to have um, non-identifying information. So you can't actually say, you know, exactly her name, our names, where we lived, that sort of stuff. So it has to be very general information. But we have received two beautiful letters from two of her reciprocants. What do you know? We know that a preschool child received one of Zadie's cornea and a middle-aged lady received Zadie's two kidneys. She was on dialysis for a six-year period. And what gave us strength in that is that she had a son, a young son, and her life um, has changed. In fact, it may have been a case that you know, Zadie saved her life through the donation of her kidneys. Mm. The hospital staff who see things like this unfold too often, mm. what were they like? I think um, they were just at all times so sensitive to our needs and Zadie's. We spent the whole time in Zadie's room with her the whole period 24 hours, was it? 30, 38 hours. 38 hours. So everything happened really, really quickly. Um, once I had said to the neurosurgeon that Zadie was going to be a donor, then they have to put in place the procedures to, to get that ball running. But the 
really nice part to that extra 10 hours while they were trying to um, coordinate everything and put it together. We had that extra time with Zadie in the hospital and that's just very special to us. What do you do in a time like that? As I said, it, it, it's just so surreal that that your child's laying there and, and there's, there's a wall of machines keeping her alive. We think how, how glad we were to have her for seven years and 22 days. And, and what she's giving, and I think you, you don't realise that as a parent, you look at your child and you say, I wonder what they're going to do when they're 21. I wonder how many kids they'll have. We didn't have that opportunity. So, you know, and we didn't realise at the time, it was, it was probably four or five days later that we realised that the hospital came back to us and said, Zadie was the only child in 2004 that donated her organs in Victoria under the age of 16. Isn't that right? And that was just, uh, that, that statistic's just a... Uh, it blew us away. We, mm. we just thought it was most people's wishes, you know, that perhaps they'd made, you know, had informed discussions like we had and made those decisions. And we just couldn't understand that no one else or no other child had done that in, during that year. Why do you think Australians have a problem with this concept? I think it's discussion around the, around the table. I think it's, it's parents talking to their kids, their kids talking to other kids, um, and adults having a conversation about it. Is there an ignorance or is it a fear, do you think? A fear, I think. It's a bit like death. People don't like to talk about death and we know that when we lost 80, people had a hard time coming to grips with it themselves, let alone facing us and talking to us about it. So that's given us strength to talk to other people about it. And um, like Alan has said, that you know, Zadie's spirit and, um, you know, all her goodness has just gone on. But, you know, she's not going to need those body parts where she is now. She doesn't need them anymore. But there's other people that do. What's your boy's name? Jazz. And a great name. He's 10? He's you? 10, yes. And how has he dealt with all of this? Well, there's no book off the shelf you can pick up and say, this is how you, you treat a child when he loses his sibling. I mean, Jazz lost his best friend. Mm. You know, his best friend. There was never a day gone by that he didn't have a time to play with Zadie. He's got no one to annoy anymore, which is, of course, no. the job of brothers yeah. with sisters. Yeah. Very difficult. Mm. The hospital gave Zadie a send-off, didn't they? Well, it's one of those situations that when it was time for Zadie to be taken back in the, her final operation and to uh, take her organs, is that when she was brought out of the room, all the staff around the reception area just stood and watched. And I guess, you know, it was just like an angel going to heaven. And in the hospital now, in all hospitals around the country, there's children in need of organs to either live or live a better life. And I think when they saw Zadie get wheeled up, they, they were blown away just as much to say, hey, this is, this is a great result. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a great day for, for others out there. Terrible for us. But she had died. We, we had no, there was no, no further things that we could do to help except donate her organs. So you would encourage any family watching tonight to talk about this and think about it? Exactly, Andrew. And I guess that's why we've come up with this idea that we want to roll out next year in Shepparton. Uh, firstly, is um, um, a, a symbol in, in, in Zadie's honour, which we've come up with Zadie's rainbow shoelaces. And we're looking to roll it out as a, an awareness campaign in, in memory of, of Zadie for people to buy rainbow shoelaces and wear for that one week next February to, to reflect their support, but also reflect the memory of our daughter and also think at times that there's thousands of people out there wanting, wanting and waiting for the right organ to come their way. And the significance of a rainbow being the seven colours of the rainbow and the seven days of the week and that there's always, you know, after the rain and the storm and the clouds, there's always the rainbow at the end, so it's that sign of hope. This is less than a year and I know your grief must still be very fresh mm. and I think it's a really brave thing to do and turning your grief into something positive. Thank you both very much. Thank, Thank you. you. That's all for now. I'll see you again next week. Have a good night.